Alright folks, it's been quite a bit of time, uh, but I'm uh, <laughs> long overdue here. So, there's not a lot in fly tying that really excites me these days, but I will say this, not to go on a negative uh, path here, but I'm going to go on a really positive one because there's been a handful of uh, materials that have come out in the last year or so that have actually got me um, pretty excited. So, today... Um, I'm going to tie this fly, you all very well know this, I have a whole series of new new patterns or variations of patterns that I'm, uh, when time permits, I'm going to try and get on video so you guys can see how to tie them, but just to kind of get the juices flowing and get you thinking about doing different things. Um, Brian uh, Weiss at Fly Fish in the Ozarks is starting a series which we must be on the same wavelength with things, but um, about substitutions and doing different things and I've always been a proponent of that um, as long as the material is going to have some applicable uh, um, characteristics and not drastically change the way the fly goes. So a few of these materials, uh, we're, we're going to tie, I guess we'll call this Headbanger 2.0 but it's a matte finish synthetic version and when I say matte finish it has very very minimal amounts of flash in it. So, as successful as a lot of the streamers I have have been, especially this one, I've always looked for a fly that I could tie or the same pattern in something that doesn't have any flash or very, very minimal amounts of flash. And if you look at the headbanger, um, essentially it's one of the less flashier fly streamer patterns that I've kind of came up with over the years. But it was always like one of those things where Boy, it would be really cool if you could have the materials available where you could do an underlayment or an underbody made out of something entirely like matte or flat finished. So, um, MFC, um, since my, my buddy Greg has gotten involved with them materials, which has been awesome, has pumped out a bunch of really cool stuff. I know you've seen some of the different um, laser printed feathers that Kelly's been pushing and even uh, Charlie Craven talked about. I'm going to actually do some stuff um, integrating a few of those into some other fly patterns of mine that you guys have seen or tied. Um, you know, things are constantly evolving and, you, you know, I, ju I don't just tie, I fish a lot too. So, you know, it's fun to tinker. I think that's the kid in me with this stuff, like, which makes it most exciting. And some days, you know, every season uh, there's just slight or l drastic changes in what's working well or based on a multitude of different things you've... You know, Kelly's put a bunch of good series out on a variety of different fishing topics and, you know, hits home on a lot of things, you know. Um, unfortunately, you got to wade through a lot of the other nonsense out there. Um, you've kind of seen me completely disappear from a lot of the internet stuff because, you know, you, I don't care what anybody says, you can't take, uh, you know, you can't shorten the experience curve. That's just, it's not going to happen. I mean, we've worked on it, but it is what it is, so I digress, but... What we're going to do today, um, and when Brian first shot my, uh, one of the first videos he did, he did do my headbanger sculpin, you know, and he talked about how he, instead of using Fox, he substituted Craffer. Now Craffer is going to, you absolutely can do that. It's going to make a slightly, a slight change to the pattern. In fact, if anything, if you're looking for something to get down quicker, Craffer is really the way to go. Um, but I'm going to show you how I like to tie it and using a couple new materials, this new polar satin matte finish chenille that Greg came out with that is in MFC together. It's absolutely great stuff. Um, this might be one of the best uh, new chenilles and um, polar chenilles I've seen come out in a long time and one that was well overdue. I got, I'm not going to drop any hints but I got to talk to Greg. I got a couple ideas for some matte finish other things but I digress. So I'm going to show you how I like to tie this. There's going to be a few nuances in here that I think you'll if you pay attention you'll garner some good information on that'll um, slow down or detract from materials fouling which I think there's a few things that get kind of lost in the mix so I'll go over that um, but with further ado I'm gonna get started so the first hook I have in here and we're gonna do a large or larger head banger um, you can scale these down. I can talk about that or I'll shoot another video another time. But this is a larger one. It's going to use the larger of the two heads. Um, 
It's the rear hook and the front hook are both the same. They're just slightly different sizes. We're going to use a size 1 for the back and a one knot for up front. That's just going to give you some more gap. Um, we're going to start out with some Vivis 140 here. You can see it. You can use any kind of olive thread. We're going to do this in an olive brown configuration. So first thing I'm going to do is just start my thread right behind the hook eye. And I'm actually going to just lay down a thread base just shy of the bend there. Now our tail, so to make everything coincide, um, you'll see, I think it's just visually appealing. And I also like color uh, flies that have a lot of different colors in them because things in nature kind of do too. We're going to start off with some medium olive craft fur. What you're going to want to do, got to go through so much of this stuff these days. Um, you're going to want to go in here and get yourself a generous clump. So take a larger pair of scissors. I go in, just like you do here, pull a, probably a two or three inch section out. Run your scissors right behind it. Cut it right at the base. And then you're going to take that bunch in your hand. Get yourself a comb or a brush. Comb out all that under stuff. We don't want that. Get rid of it. And then to keep your tail not super long, but enough that it's going to move, it's going to be about two lengths of the shank of this hook. You can transfer it to here. What I'm going to do before that, though, is I'm actually going to cut this off just like you see. Get rid of it. Because then, when I transfer this here, I'm actually going to take one pinch wrap, and if you see, I'm holding it in my between my two fingers to kind of cinch it down. And I'm just going to slowly spiral wrap forward. And if you got a couple errant ones here, you see I've left enough space on there. Or I don't go fully to the eye, but darn close. And then I'm going to come back towards that craft fur. Now, it's a little salt water trick here. If you've worked with craft fur and you fish it, you know that this has a tendency to foul. So if you want this to foul less or not at all, lift up on the tail, do one, two turns, and then come around the base of it. And you'll see, I'll grab the thread with, this is all acquired skill from tying so much. Take my ring finger and grab it and I'm going to take about four or five turns right around the base and then come right back. So what I've essentially done is posted that material. If you really want it to not foul, you can take a little bit of glue or resin, whatever works for you. Hit it. And now you've kind of stiffened that up. It's, you've basically eliminated the fouling factor here. So quick tip. Next thing you're going to do is what I like to do, I've been playing around with this now for several weeks and fishing these flies and they they work really well. Can't wait to show you some of the swim flies I'm doing some stuff with this with. But what I like to do instead of, if you look at the reg, original headbanger, it ran um, a slap and feather through some like cactus chenille, right? Or you could use ice dub. But if you don't want any flash in there, this is where this new you know, these new polar chenilles that are matte finish come into play. So what I like to do with these, instead of running, and you could do this if you want. If you want a bushier body, then you can use the regular, um, one of the smaller versions. I think it comes in like three sizes, like 10, 20, and 30 millimeter of the regular chenille. And then you could run this polar chenille through it. But what I've done is I like to take a medium, in, in this case I'm using a brown, and a large olive brown. And now what I'm going to do is, and Greg popularized this technique, and he doesn't really get any credit for it um, with some fellow tires in the field, which is really kind of sad. Um, you take the two pieces of chenille together, and you can kind of see one's longer than the other. And what we're going to do, we're going to tie them in together, and then we're going to twist them together. And I've heard this called the complex twist, whatever you want to call it. There's, it doesn't matter the name, it's just you're twisting two fibers together to create a uniform color or a mixed color in a body. 
So we're going to take these two, and if you look, I've got them so that they're laying with the materials facing backwards. That's important. So they take these two, tie them in together, cinch that down relatively well. I go right to the base of that craft fur, and then I'm going to come to a spot that's roughly an eye or two eyes length back from that uh, eye of the hook. Now what we're going to do is you're going to take yourself and I cut a section off because you got to be able to twist this stuff. Get your um, gator clip uh, dubbing whirl from Loon if you have one. This thing works really good for this. And then you're just going to take this stuff and you're going to spin it together in your hand. If it's too long it's not just going to spin. It might take a little bit of time. While I'm spinning that I'd like to take one of these little finger brushes that EP sells. So I'll spin it for a few as I've done here and then just kind of pick it out. And then once I've gotten to that point you can put your thread in your bobbin cradle if you like. Use your rotary function. Make sure that that very first turn goes right at the base. You can kind of just pick this stuff out as you go. Now, the trick to this is, is you don't have to make it super tight consecutive wraps. And the reason being, if you do do that, it's going to catch a lot of those fibers, right? So, essentially what I do is I do open wraps or open turns. Lock that in. And you're going to take your thread. You can kind of just pull some of this stuff apart with your scissors. You see really quickly here. So I'll do one, two, three over. One, two, three in front. Trim it. Set it aside because you're going to use that for the front half. And then just kind of build a small thread base over that and you'll see what's happened here is you've got this nice two-tone varied length underbody throw that little half inch in there now what you can do in the original headbanger I would do a reverse tie on the back but what I like and this adds a very very minimal flash is you take one of these EP crafter brushes and the cool thing with this is you can really integrate all the different colors into this. So this olive in brown which has brown synthetic core and an olive craft fur with some very very minimal flash really really accents this perfectly for the color scheme that we're doing. And This is one that I've been fishing fairly often lately and it works really well. So trim that wire right down. You want to get right to the base of that wire. It's easier to tie in. Tie it on the near side of the hook. We're just going to wrap that over, half hitch it, and then now we're just going to do about three to four turns of this. And don't worry about if this bunches up right away. After a couple turns, you can just get in here with your brush, just pick some of it out. Four. It's amazing to see how the world has changed when I first started tying videos. Geez, it's been over 15 years now. We were making our own brushes back then, and now they have all these awesome available materials where just grab it out of a package and go. So, I do th three over, three in front. Use your bad pair of scissors. This is my banged up pair because that is wire in there just to cut it close. Flatten that burr out with your thumb. We're just going to build a little thread head here. Do a three-fourths turn with whip finish on there. And then what you can do is just put whatever you like on there for head cement. I'm using some bone dry. Yes, I am using resin still. But I'm a lot care more careful of how I apply it and use my torch. Because it does not 
my body doesn't like this stuff too much. All right, now, next thing, I've already pre-cut my wire. So one of the other materials I really like, I'm gonna show you here in a second, is these new, and this is another MFC product. Um, I'm actually transferring and I'm subbing in these for all the beads and the applicable colors on all my t articulated flies now. Um, well, it fell off, but I'll put it back on. These teardrop beads were a long time coming. They're just like the 3D beads with the finish, but they're in a teardrop form. These are probably one of the best materials for streamer tires that have come out ever. And you'll see why in a moment. And I will tell you this, I've seen these used improperly. Now, I, everybody is going to get on me. Oh, you know, you can do things different ways. Well, yeah, but sometimes they have a significant purpose and a distinct purpose. So I'm going to show you how to use these. So we'll put our wire back on here. Pinch it through. All right, so you're going to use these beads. There's a right way and a wrong way on these, unfortunately, folks. Um, you want to put these on with the fat end towards the rear. And I'm going to show you why in a moment when we go to affix this to the front hook, like so. So that's how that teardrop bead should be put on there. And you can actually cinch it down quite a ways to the rear. And you're going to see why we do this. The whole, if you do it otherwise, the whole purpose of this bead is because you have this angle now instead of a round surface, you can cinch this right down up against the natural curve of that front hook. And if you look at what's happening right now, because it's a longer base, it's actually made a sturdier connection in the middle and it's going to allow this back hook to flow freely and foul less because it's going to prevent it from fouling. Hence why you put it on this way. So I've seen, and I don't, I'm basically a troll on social media now, folks. I don't really, I don't post, I don't comment. I still keep a finger on the pulse of what's going on. I've seen a lot of people using these incorrectly. They've put them on the other way. So they'd be on the hook in that direction because they think they want more mass up front and less in the rear. And in this instance, it's not the case. So we're going to put our front hook on here. This is the same hook, it's a TP610 Airx, but it's a one aught. Get my thread base on there. Now, take three turns, wire together. Now watch what happens. Oh wow, look at that. The natural curvature and the triangular shape of this fits nicely right there so that that keeps that rear section of that hook perfectly in line where it should be so when you take this out of the vise and you go to fish it or tie it or whatever you'll see exactly what I'm talking about now we're just going to advance our thread right over butt in sections of that wire and I know there's a lot of different schools of thought guys are using mono you use whatever works for you I still like this wire it works well for me. Mono will degrade over time. The mono, however, if you use it thick enough, it you'll get a lot more life out of it. But I really like the way that this wire works for me. So it's a nice thing you have choices. Now I'll show you another little nifty thing. I used to use a clip on here, right? See this? If you don't have one, you might want to get some. You can get them through Amazon. And all they are is... It's a silicone clip with a couple of magnets in it. Uh, they're used for earbuds and cords. That's the company. Here's all you got to do. You just got a magnet, one side, right over the top to the other. I've kept everything right out of the way. Pretty ingenious, huh? I like it a lot. Alright, so now we're going to go right in here. Take our craft for a brush again. We're just going to do a couple of turns here, like maybe one or two. This is just to fill in some space. One, two.
one, two, three, one, two, three. Trim it. Flatten out your burr. One thing I omitted on this was the uh, crazy legs. You can put them in if you want. Um, but I think the way this fly uh, looks with the materials we have, we've got so much variation in, in color, you almost don't need it. But if you really want to put them in, go for it. We're going to grab our two chenilles again, tie them in. You see here. Bring it right up to point right about there. Same thing, we're going to turn this. Take your gator clip, spin it. After so many turns, brush a little bit out. Half hitch that, and then we're just going to run this forward, same thing, two turns. We're going to go right to about that point there, which is about where my head would start for my scope and helmet. We're actually going to fill that space in with some material here in a second, and you'll see why. Once that's there, clip it, set it aside. You can kind of just preen that stuff backwards. Half hitch. I suggest keeping one of these in your vest. We're going to take that same graffer brush again. Trim it right at the base. Now we're going to do about four turns with it. And the only reason I do this, this is just to build up some dimension in here and add a little bit. There's not a lot of material on these brushes. They do look full, but you got to remember, craft fur is very fine and wispy material. This is just to create a little bit more, a little more bulk up front. If you do a couple turns, about three. Same thing, we're going to tie it off again. This is where it gets fun. Because what we're trying to do is build up some mass to fill in the interior of that sculpin helmet when we slide it on. Now we're going to reverse it, go right back into your craft fur again. This is to give us our front wing. and take another generous amount. Cut it right at the base. Same thing. Pull out all the under fur. I want it to kind of bleed back like yay. So then, go in here. Use your good pair of scissors, minor shot. Tie so much. We're going to take it, reverse it, right here, 180 degrees. Once you build a good little thread base there, then you're just going to take it and maneuver it backwards, like you do in the original one. So you have a nice little bump there. Once you've done that, I'm going to put a couple of half hitches on there. Trim out some of this stuff. Advance my thread in front. You can see, starting to build that dimension in there, right? Now the next thing we're going to do, and I'm sure you've just seen this stuff, I've been using this quite a bit. Um, I've got a bunch of cool patterns to show you with this. And we're working out some new colors, but... Um, Aaron Letera's carnivore dub. Now, in order to get a nice color blend here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two colors together. So I'm taking his burnt sienna and his garbage pickle, and I'm just going to take these two and card and pull them apart. Now, the collar on this is going to be slightly differently tied as the original, which used like laser dub or some of his magnum dubbing. You can even take your wire brush and brush these two together like so. Pull some of it out. Now you get a nice little olive and brown mix here, right? And so all we're going to do with this, because this is a longer fiber, we're going to tie this in in the middle. We're going to figure eight it. So you do three going one way, 
advance in front. Come around the other side. Three going the other. Advance in front. Do it again. Going that way. Come over it. Like so. So it looks something like this. As you can see here. Once you've got that in place, then you're just going to take your thread and advance it in front. We'll whip finish and tie that off. If you got a few errant uh, craft fur fibers in here, it's a good time to take your cautery tool, as long as it's working, to take that stuff off. Now, take a pair of flat pliers, non serrated, flatten that out top and bottom. Next thing you're going to do is put a little drop Loctite on the top. I've already pre-done my eyes and I'm using flat tape eyes nowadays guys because then I fill the, the gaps in with resin on these. So pop this right on there, kind of cinch it on like you see here. You want to push it through enough so that you got enough space to build a thread dam in front. But before you do that, I like to take some Zappa Gap Medium. drop it right there and it'll filter right down into that if you get some on the eye that's completely fine because then you can just pop it off with a bodkin or the stem of a feather there's another trick you can do that'll take it right out cleans your eye out too perfect then we're going to take our thread Pop it right back on there. Get your resin. I'll do a couple coats of this on there. Torch it. Now I'll take like a thick or medium. Put this in a different bottle because it's a little bit more precise. We're just going to fill in those eyes. seconds and then hit it for a good 10. If it comes out a little sticky sometimes it will. I'll just put another little thin coat of bone dry right over it. And then over the thread wraps of that. And that's pretty much it. And then you can just pop this guy right out of there, take your magnet off. And we'll cut your finger like I just did. And then you got your nice, you can kind of see there's your head banger, 2.0, fully synthetic. Beauty thing of this is, it's this thing sheds crazy water. I'll zoom this out so you can see it. Um, Nice thing is, is with the multitude of new materials that are in here, you've got a pattern that's mostly matte. There's not much flash, if any. And it swims just as well. And if you look at it, it's got a great profile to it. So you've got that little trick I showed you in the tail there. So your tail is going to foul very, very little, if any. you got this new bead in here, which is going to keep that tail portion right where it needs to be. And you can see, it's got a nice little taper to it. You'll see these in my store pretty soon here. I've been having fun fishing these. It's just a nice little different variation. It's 
hammer and fish. If I didn't talk so much, we could have tied this in about five minutes. That's it, folks. I got some more new stuff to show you. Hope you like it. Have fun tinkering with these, making different color combos, and most of all, have fun fishing them. These things do work.